In this video, I'm going to share my five golden rules that I use to make every single Power BI project a success. Now, I have over 10 years of experience working on all different kinds of Power BI projects for hundreds, maybe even thousands of clients throughout all different kinds of industries. And these five rules my team and I use on every single project. All right, so let's dive in with the first one. Every single report, before you even build it, you should really understand well the problem. All right, so it starts with the problem. And this might be something like that the company doesn't know where to invest next to grow the business further. So understanding the problem means you also will understand the value that your report generates. So the impact that it will have. And for a business, that means money. How is your report helping to drive revenue up or cost down or free up time? So we have to know the problem and the value before even developing the report. I did a poll recently on LinkedIn where I asked how many of your reports within your organization are actively used. And 50% answered that most of their reports, that is 50% or more, were unused or they didn't know, which is probably even worse. So you want to know even before you start building if your report is really solving a big problem and is going to have an impact, if it really generates value for the business, not that it's going to end up with a big pile of unused reports. And also for yourself, for your own career growth, you want to solve big problems with your report. All right, so that gives you basically the why. Why should your report exist? Then also you need to know, okay, who is going to use your report? It's going to be the CEO, upper management, or more operational people, which then will also impact the what, all right? So what needs to go in that report? So that will serve as the foundation and you want to document that and break it down further into different decisions that your report is going to help with. So you can document it in such a way that for one report, you need to have a clear goal. So that's going to be related to the problem and the value that it brings. And then what decisions need to be made in support of that goal. So we have decision one, let's say, decision two, and decision three. And by setting up such a document, you can create clarity, which serves throughout the whole report development process, also with your communication with the stakeholders. And that is my next point. All right, so we get to engaging the stakeholders. All right, so let's say we have you, the Power BI developer. Now, let me draw you. Okay, now I'm going to assume that you look something like this. All right, and you have Power BI knowledge, you have the technical knowledge. All right, so let me draw over here the Power BI icon. All right, and you want to engage with the stakeholders because the stakeholders, they have the business knowledge. No, this is the stakeholder, all right. And the stakeholder knows everything about the business. So how the business generates money and how the problem actually can be solved. And you not, don't necessarily have that knowledge. And you need to make sure that you're in constant communication. And the stakeholders can be the end users, can be subject matter experts, or could be project managers, all right? Now, you don't want to start the project, have these requirements that you gather at the beginning, and then all the way sprint till the end and deliver it. No, you want to engage them at the beginning and also throughout the entire process. And in that way, you also get a better business understanding. The stakeholders get a better understanding of what is possible and new ideas will pop up and can be integrated. Because the requirements that you get at the beginning is just a starting point. It should not be set in stone. You should still be able to make adjustments here and there to incorporate a new understanding that everybody involved gets. So in this way, we make sure that business value is integrated into the report so that it really generates that business value. Plus another one that's maybe not that obvious at the beginning, and that is that you can already get some buy-in because, well, people that are engaged from the very beginning, well, they also will feel like it's a little bit their baby and they will see how that report can benefit them. And they will see how their feedback gets integrated into the report. So you already have some fans of your Power BI report 
which will help you later on when you then really roll it out throughout the organization. All right, so by engaging the stakeholders early, we also get some extra buy-in, plus a third point, we can build some authority. So we can show progress along the way, they will see that we know what we're doing and they will see how the report is getting better and better. All right, now that brings me to point number three, iterate. Iteration is often better than aiming to sprint to the finish line in one go. Now, just imagine the following scenario. So let's say we are at the beginning, all right, and you defined all of the requirements, right? So you figured out what the problem is, what the value is, uh, what impact your report basically is going to have. And you think that the report should look like this, let's say like a triangle. All right. Now, what you want to have in an ideal case is that you could go from that starting point where there's nothing to that ending point that you envisioned in one straight line, just like this. Hmm. That's often not the reality, unless you're very lucky and there are no obstacles along the way. But usually it's more like this, that there are some obstacles that you have to overcome. All right. So it's not as efficient as it might look like at the beginning. Now, with iteration, you go at it a little bit differently. So you start here at the beginning, and then instead of working, let's say, for four weeks on trying to get it perfect, as so like as in that first approach over here, you do the following. You first make a prototype where you just have part of that final solution. So maybe you only build that part of the report. Well, let me just draw that over here. And then you talk with the stakeholders again, and you make the next part of the report, just like this. And you might decide actually, oh, instead of building that triangle that you envisioned at the beginning, probably better to maybe make it like this. And after talking to the stakeholders a little bit more, you make another iteration where you think, oh, actually, I want to have this over here. So you keep on making small incremental changes and you iterate. So you keep on going just like this, another iteration, another iteration. Every single time you add something to the report to then end up with uh, a diamond. So at the beginning, you thought oh, it needed to look like a triangle, but you, uh, in the end, you decided together with the stakeholders that with that new information that came up along the way, with that better understanding that the stakeholders got, as well as what you got from the business, you figured that diamond actually is much better than that envisioned triangle that you were thinking of at the beginning. All right, so in this way, you built your report through iteration instead of aiming for perfection in one go. All right, and that process is often actually quicker than trying to do it in one go, plus it leads to a better result. All right, so iteration over perfection. Then, number four, once your report is done, do not just send it to the users and that's it. Instead of that, promote your report. So that brings me to point four. Now here you want everybody that should be using your report to hear about your report and why they should be using it. All right, so over here. And how you can do that is, first of all, by, for example, training or small workshops, or think of videos that you can make on that report, right? So maybe a short five to 15 minute video, video that explains how the report should be used, where to find it, why it's so good. And what you can of course also do is internal channels like email, or Teams or Zoom uh, to communicate about the report. And what you want to make sure of is that the impact, the value, so why, who, what, that that flows into how you promote it. All right, then number five, do not just assume that everybody knows how to use your Power BI report. So that brings me to number five, educate. Now, let me also draw here a nice little university ad or something like that. So this will make sure that people actually know how to use your report and get to the insights that they need to see to make better business decisions, all right? Don't take that for granted. Everybody within an organization might know how to use Excel, but Power BI in many organizations is new and not everybody knows how to use it. And some functionalities are quite specific to Power BI. Think of buttons that you set up with bookmarks or 
our drill through works or drill down can be quite confusing. It might be that you have users that don't figure out about these type of functionalities if you don't tell them, all right? So also train the business users, not only the business developers. Now, the business developers, of course, also need to be trained. If you're a consultant that hands over your Power BI report, make sure that also from the client side, there are people that can maintain it. And so think documentation, workshops, trainings about that report that you've built. So you see all of these things, these main principles, these five golden rules that I've written down over here. Now they don't show having an amazing data model optimized DAX. Of course, ideally you would also want to have that, but that is just what good Power BI developers do. What makes a great Power BI developer is one that takes ownership of these things that I'm writing down over here. Not just the building of the report, but also double checking the problem, the value, should the report be created in the first place so that you really know the why, the who, the what, and then also documents that, then engages the stakeholders throughout the entire process. So to make sure that there's good business understanding from their side, gets the buy-in, builds the authority, goes through a process of iteration to get to the best result possible in the fastest way, and takes care of the promotion. Because even the best, most amazing report well, doesn't bring any value if nobody knows of it and is not using it. And of course, education. Make sure that the end users know how to use it and that there are people that can maintain the report also in the future. So taking ownership over all these five things is what makes a good Power BI developer turn into a great Power BI developer. All right, now that's it. These are the five main principles that my team and I use in every single project. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you really want to deep dive into the different stages together with me and learn all of my tips and tricks and get my templates, then check out my upcoming design transformation program over here. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.